live right now. We're live on a new live stream. And uh, give me a, uh, just a moment. We'll be live also on uh, our YouTube, a backup channel on YouTube. We've got a large cup of coffee handy. A lot to cover. A lot to cover. I don't even know how I can cover it all. Amazing for this morning how much stuff's going on. Are you serious? What? I'm sorry about that. Let's fix that real fast. Okay. Oh, wow. It's getting crazier, guys. Every day it seems like the, the stuff that's going on is getting crazier and crazier and crazier. We're in the end times. We're in the last days. And that's why it's uh, getting crazy like this. So. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Let's push the buttons and stream this thing live, all right? What do you say? Amazing. What goes on? All right, we're coming online live. Oh, I see. I don't have my uh, phone, so you guys can't hear me over there. Hang on a second. I'll fix that right now. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Izzy Bella's in the house. Oh, yes. I want to read from the word of the Lord here this morning. I want to read from the word of the Lord. Going to Jeremiah chapter 30. And, and just uh, grab a cup of coffee, everybody. Calm down. we got a lot to cover quickly. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the, the Lord God of Israel, saying... Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land um, that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. These are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see any man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas! For the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. All right, this is known as Jacob's troubles. But notice here, the Lord said he would preserve Israel, he would protect Israel, he would deliver Israel, and break the yoke from off their neck and give them the victory in this end times. Now, we've got a lot to cover here today, and uh, uh, wow. Okay, wow. Uh, let's just get right into it. We've got earthquakes. Yes, we do. Matter of fact, there's a lot of them that are mid-ranged. So we're going to talk a little bit here today because Russia and Ukraine is getting out of control. And the border, just 30 miles south of where I'm sitting right now, is uh, yesterday got totally out of control between the United States and Mexico. So And we've and we got a ton of other stuff going on, okay? So let's dig into this. Uh, the Bible, you know, there's something biblical going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ. I've got a huge cup of coffee. And um, I'm going to eat it. 
Matter of fact, here's what's going on. Let's just the range earthquakes that are out there. 5.3 Iran, 4.9 New Caledonia, 4.6 Chile, 4.3 Iraq, 5.6 powerful quake in Colombia, 4.4 Iraq, 4.1 Iran. 5.0, those aftershocks from that 6.3 earthquake that hit yesterday in Iran. The aftershocks continue. 5.0, Iran. 4.1, Karakistan. 5.7 earthquake hit in Taiwan last night. 5.3, the Pacific Antarctic Ridge. 4.9, and another 4.9, three minutes apart, Iran. A 4.4 and a 4.4 back-to-back, seven minutes apart, Colombia. Then a 4.7 in Colombia, 4.6 Russia, 4.5 Colombia, uh, 4.6 Colombia, 4.9 New Zealand, 4.5 Japan, 4.6 Earthquake, very deep in Argentina, 4.2 Montenegro, 4.6 Indonesia, 4.4 Greece, 4.4 earthquake in Alaska, and, uh, and there was a bunch of other earthquakes. Okay, but those are the ones that at least 0.0 and higher, hitting all over the place around the globe. Uh, so we'll keep a close eye on what's going on with the special in Iran. Now, we had reports yesterday over 200 people were injured. Still waiting on more injury reports as uh, these earthquakes have been hitting Iran. Uh, and we're, so we're going to continue to take those out for you. The story ends on a really just perfect 313 kilometers per second. But there's a massive hole on the sun's atmosphere. Just a massive hole on the sun's atmosphere which when it starts to rotate around toward us is going to allow the solar winds to you know, just find our direction. And so um, we're going to keep a close eye on those, okay? Keep a close eye on those. Because um, we know what it's going to do. It's going to increase, and the CMEs are going to, I mean, the pressure is going to build from the solar winds. Oh, there was 12 fireballs in the last 24 hours that broke through the Earth's atmosphere. We have no asteroids at all going to near miss us today unless something pops up at the last second. Yesterday we did report for you that a comet crashed into the sun. We have joy. We had fun. We had a comet crashing in the sun. Yeah, seriously, we did. And uh, that was a little bitty comet. It didn't even have a name. No one even knows, you know, no one even knows your name there. Okay, this comet, did, did God knew about the comet, and, and it's crashed, it's gone, it's over. All right? <sighs> Don't let the sun go down on me. I can't help myself. I'm just a little comet, you see. It's like the sun going down on me. Seriously, that's what that comet felt like, but uh, it's going to be okay. Um, it's going to be just fine. Uh, there's some kind of a, a craziness going on right now. Paris, France on fire. And, of course, the chaos, the people are upset over that gas tax. And they're not happy today either, as Emmanuel Macron put a heavy tax on diesel, and so that affects every person when they go to the pumps for their cars. The people in Paris are upset. It wasn't just Paris. It was 1,600 riots, excuse me, 1,600 protests across the entire country of France protesting against the, the tax on diesel. And Macron uh, is holding his ground saying new people need to get over it. And they're like, are you crazy? Uh, the economy is already out of control. We can't afford the way it is. The cost of living is outrageous. The taxes are way too high. And you're, now you're putting another tax on us. And so people are starting to push back in Paris. It was on fire in Paris yesterday, the chaos, the craziness. It's just insane what's going on. Uh, we're going to continue to watch and see what happens. But um, 
Paris on fire. That was the title of last night's broadcast, and so it's uh, we're going to watch it closely. There's just so much going on out there, folks, right now. Uh, but we got to talk about Russia and Ukraine. Let's start there because the tensions could not be getting any higher. Of course, the conflict continues to go on after Russia uh, annexed Crimea from Ukraine and also the fighting that's been going on with the Russian rebels and the Ukrainians in eastern Ukraine that's been going on now for four years. Now Ukraine had three of her ships seized by the uh, Russians and uh, they're... D- and Apparently, they got over into Russian waters, or it was an area where it's not been Russian waters. It's been an area where Ukraine and Russia and everybody used this little waterway that's uh, between Crimea and the mainland Russia. But yesterday, as three of Ukrainian boats were going through there, and um, one was a tugboat, and the other two were um, gunboats of the uh, Ukrainians, Russia rammed into one of the boats, fired on the other two. Six Ukrainian sailors were injured and had to be treated. And uh, so now Ukraine is demanding, they're demanding that Russia release these three boats. They're demanding it. They've also, the president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, has just implemented martial law in Ukraine on the Ukrainian citizens. Now, part of that is so that he can figure out who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. So what he's saying is everybody, martial law. So if you're out after sundown, you're considered an enemy. And that's to try to identify who these Russian rebels are and to also crack down. So this is getting crazy again in the Ukraine. And... uh, uh, so the, the tensions are building with Russia and Ukraine. We need to really pray for the Ukrainian people because anytime you get any, any country that puts martial law on its citizens for, for the next two months, this is going to put a hardship big time. It's going to cripple the economy and it's going to make people very, 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 very difficult. Uh, you know, as people are still trying to live, okay? Uh, in the midst of all of this. So Ukraine has demanded that Russia release the ships and send them back. And um, uh, Russia is refusing to. So the tensions now are getting extremely high. There are troop movements now going on. And Ukraine has imposed martial law on its citizens in the Ukraine. And so uh, this could spiral into something very ugly. In the same time that's going on, of course, you've got the the French problem in France, the people protesting, burning tires, flipping cars, and uh, uh, tear gas and and, and rioting and looting going on there. And while that's going on in France, you have the Amazon, the Cyber Monday problem now, this uh, Black Friday protest It was actually a strike all over Europe uh, in Amazon fulfillment centers, workers going on strike uh, all over Europe, in Spain, in Italy, uh, in the UK. It was going on in uh, all over, about six different countries. Amazon fulfillment center workers going on strike, refusing to ship the products, the the, the orders uh, to the customers. So uh, in Spain, Amazon called the police and uh, just outside of Madrid, Spain, and said to the police, look, you got to help us here because there's tons of, uh, you know, tons of Amazon workers outside. They were protesting. They were striking. They were refusing to go to work. And uh, at one point, uh, Amazon wanted the police to tell the workers, get in there and work. And you have to have high productivity. Now, Amazon's denying this. They're saying, yes, we called the police to just to make sure that the people who were in there working were not being disturbed by the ones outside striking. But uh, local authorities are saying that the Amazon officials actually tried to get the police to go in and tell the workers, hey, get to work and, and get the orders filled. 
So there's some chaos in that. I, you know, Amazon's denying that completely. They're saying we did not do that, but we did call the police. So Amazon is saying they did call the police. So it's getting ugly now uh, on this Cyber Monday. And oh, by the way, um, so who knows what's going to happen? So all right, so let's see if we got this right. You got rioting going on because of a gas tax, high taxes by Emmanuel Macron put on a diesel in all of France. So they're tear gas, rubber bullets, and they're rioting. You got six other nations in Europe on strike, refusing to ship the Christmas gifts of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, chaos going on in Amazon. And over in the United States-Mexico border, right down the road here from San Diego, between San Diego and Tijuana, just 30 miles south of where I'm sitting uh, yesterday, thousands of immigrants tried to rush the border, uh, and there was bottles and and, and rocks being thrown, hitting border uh, agents. They fired rubber bullets into the crowd and tear gas. And you got women and children, and just a total, uh, this is a total ugly situation. Now, in the midst of all of that craziness yesterday, 42 uh, immigrants did make it across the border somehow. They all got arrested. Trump is now threatening to close the entire border between the United States of America and Mexico. He did close the border down here between San Diego and Tijuana. The border's closed right now. It don't matter if you have a you know, the right to drive the semi trucks and buses and cars and people. There's a lot of people that work, you know, in, in, in Mexico and some people in Mexico work in America and they have the right to go back and forth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The border's closed right now. Okay. The border is closed down here in San Diego, California, and Tijuana. Um, and so, and Trump is threatening to close it on the entire border between the two nations. Now, he's demanding that Mexico send all of these people that are uh, from other countries, Honduras, Guatemala, Ecuador, wherever else they may have come from, from Central America. He's demanding Colombia, you know, everybody back. Panama, He's demanding that they all be deported by Mexico. Mexico is in the process of considering doing that. Now, the Tijuana mayor down here, he's running around with the Make Tijuana Great Again hat, and he's in agreement with Trump. So Mexico is now realizing that if uh, if Trump's not going to let the border be open, so it's kind of crazy. You know, I don't know. Uh, then you got the coyotes down there. They're helping people get across. Uh, so some people are getting around the system anyway. I don't, I don't know. And then now Trump's demanding that the uh, Congress fund the border wall. So I'm with RoboMom. I don't think they can control this, and I think she's right. I, I don't think it's, I don't think they can control this. I don't think it's possible, even with the however many troops. I mean, you'd have to put a lot of troops. Do you know how long this border is between the United States and Mexico? Now, it's going to slow it way down. If you shut down the ports of entry, which is what Trump has done down here in Tijuana and, and San Diego, if you shut down the port of entry, then, you know, yeah, a few people can crawl over the fences. You got barbed wire. You got all kinds of stuff going on. But uh, you can't, you, you know, so if, there's always going to be, like, like they said, 42 people got across instead of uh, uh, like 3,000 that would have got across had this uh, not been done. But this uh, this is going to be kind of weird how this plays out. And, uh, you know, politically, Trump is going to be fighting against uh, Congress, and, and some of the members of Congress are going to be fighting against the president and with each other. They're going to fight actually with each other. And uh, Mexico, you know, it's just really ugly, guys. We're talking tear gas. We're talking rubber bullets. Um... You know, and and who knows uh, exactly? Th- there's no winners on this, is what I'm trying to say. There's no winners in this situation. Okay, a lot of prayers. All I can do, I I see. I know there's women and children down there. Look, they don't know what's going on. People are are telling them go this way. You know, and they've and so um, 
and the Tijuana mayor is saying, look, we can't deal with this. Got to ship these people back to Guatemala, Honduras, or wherever, uh, parts of Mexico, wherever they need to go. Uh, the Mexican president, I'm sure, is throwing his hands up right now. There's just a lot going on. And so, and if you're a border agent down there, you're, you're, you're concerned about your safety. Um, if you're one of the troops, you're, you, you know, you're like, I don't know why, why I even want to be here. I don't really want to be here. So this is a really ugly situation, okay? And the body of Christ needs to really pray like never before. But this, could, this, this, is a, uh, this could be a watershed moment, really. Okay, it could be a really, really watershed moment. I'm just praying. And the children, that's right. Uh, the children are very vulnerable right now. 666 people watching with us right now, our backup channel on YouTube. Uh, thank you for coming to our backup channel at Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Last night's broadcast, we had technical difficulties, and so I couldn't even go the full three hours uh, due to the fact that I, my computer, I was live with nothing on my screen. So... And I just kept saying, am I live? Can somebody find out for me? Am I live? Because I had no chatting. I had no nothing. All of my information was wiped off my page. Uh, yet I was still working and everything was on. Uh, today I can see what I'm doing, so thank God for that. But we have not uploaded last night's broadcast yet on my main YouTube channel because I can't do that from here. Mike. Uh, Mike will do it for me, but he's working this morning, so it, it may be a 24-hour delay before that gets on the main channel. But anyway, we're here today, and uh, we'll be headed uh, back home, uh, so we will be back in the studio here in the next few hours. But let me just say this. We will see more things going on than what we've been dealing with now. We will see more taking place in the next few days. You're going to see more and more tensions rise all over the, the world as uh, this is getting out of control down there in Mexico, United States border. My prayers, my prayers are that somehow something work out. Um, I've got a couple more things going on. So if you're, if you're in France today, you're, they're, they're rioting in the streets all weekend over the Emmanuel Macron's raising the taxes on diesel. If you're anywhere in Europe, you, you might hear about the uh, strikes going on with Amazon all over the place, six different countries, Amazon workers on strike, refusing to ship Black Friday, and now refusing to ship Cyber Monday orders. This is really going to put a, 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 a really going to mess up the ho holiday system and economy over there in Europe. Oh, and by the way, the EU just voted to go ahead and agree to the Brexit. Really, that's nice because the people in the United Kingdom voted to Brexit in the summer of 2016. So it's only taken, uh, you know, two and a half years to get EU to agree to let the Brexit happen. Uh, I don't know if Theresa May survives this or not. And uh, I don't know if it ever happened or not, to be quite honest with you. Now that they've agreed, what's that mean? Another year and a half to implement? I mean, really, seriously. Does anybody even know what's going on over there with that? Uh, but So that's a problem. If you're in Europe, you've got those two issues going on. That's counting all your other issues, like the overpopulation of migrants in uh, Germany and France and Belgium and in some of the other countries where there's, that has been an ongoing problem. So as that's all going on, the United States dealing with the border with Mexico issue, and that's becoming uh, a, a real ugly situation. And if you're, oh, oh, by the way, in Europe, you have the Ukraine-Russia situation. Ukraine has just voted the president, excuse me, the president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, has just implemented martial law in Ukraine. The Russians have seized three of the Ukrainian ships. They rammed into one. They shot and, and, and they hit a couple other boats with, uh, with fire. Six Ukrainian sailors were injured. The three boats were seized by the Russians. The Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine, is demanding that Vladimir Putin release the three boats. Meanwhile, Poroshenko wants to get his hands on his own country to prevent chaos from breaking out or Russian rebels rising up. So the Russia-Ukraine tensions, martial 
on okay? This is only the worse. Are you serious? It's good to see you there in Austin, Texas. I want to say hi to David Knotts, Regina, Jesus is King, Deborah, Gunner, Lydia, Teresa, Robo, um, Miss ZD in the house, the Watchmen's here, everybody over there, back up the channel at YouTube. I want to say hi to everybody at the new live stream channel and all of you watching on Roku Satellite Television and everybody watching at the website at paulbeckerprophecy.com and everybody listening on the radio line. Live, you can call the number 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. I live right now, she's uh, bouncing around. Me, her me is studying. What? So you can understand that conversation going on around. We don't understand each other. That's really good theory. Uh, uh, anyway, but, uh, that's all right now. It's okay. And then we got Merlin and the cat. And so uh, uh, we're having a good time here with the family. All right. Having a good time with the family. Okay. Oh, by the way. Uh, some other issues going on here. Did you hear about the Amtrak train from um, Boston to um, New York? I think it was. Let me just let me, let me see if I can remember what I've. Hang on a second. A train uh, really got ugly, guys. Six hours or longer, maybe. Toilets wouldn't flush on an Amtrak train. Um, it got hung up there, and. Uh, yeah, because they use high tech toilets um, are being used in certain places, but on Amtrak the toilets just didn't flush. Okay, so when that happened, six hours they started using cardboard for uh, cardboard porta potties. That was real ugly, but something had to be done. So uh, that happened over yesterday so was, uh, between Boston and New York. I think it was a train got stuck down and six hours and people could get off the train. They couldn't go to the bathrooms. The toilets wouldn't flush. So that become a real issue. Um, everybody survived that fairly situation. <laughs> By the way, we're talking about Russia. Ukraine and, uh, and oh, by the way, let me just I'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> Ukraine is upset, but the Russians have just said to the Americans, you better not be deploying new missiles in Europe. Because if you do, we're going to deploy new missiles in Cuba. And we're back to this Cuban missile crisis. Are you serious? Moscow the United States does not deploy missiles in Europe. New missiles. Senior Russian diplomat has warned that the U.S. withdrawal from the Cold War Air Arms Control Pact could critically upset the stability of Europe. Uh, Foreign Minister Sergei today that if the United States deploys intermediate range missiles in Europe after opting out of the treaty banning their use, it will allow Washington to reach targets deep, deep inside Russia. U.S. President Donald J. Trump declared his intention last month to withdraw from the 1987 Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, also known as the INF, over alleged Russian violations, Moscow has denied breaching the pact and accused Washington of uh, violating it. So they warned that the United States stations the currently banned missiles in Europe, Russia will have to have an effective response and an for those developments. They have been saying they will be Missile to Cuba. We're back to 1962 Russian Cuba missile crisis. Um, so keep on that. 
they don't want that to happen. Uh, what do you guys think about the fact that uh, China Baby, that was back in the 80s. So, the scientists are creating CRISPR babies. We told you this was coming, guys. The DNA manipulation. A daring effort is underway to create the first children whose DNA has been tailored using gene editing. When Chinese researchers first edited the genes of a human embryo in a lab dish. Uh, in 2015, it sparked global outcry and pleas from scientists not to make a baby using this technology, at least for the present. It was the invention of a powerful gene editing tool called CRISPR, which is cheap and easy to deploy, that made the birth of humans genetically modified, a GMO human being. Genetically modified in a vitro fertilization center, a theoretical possibility. Now it appears it may already be happening. Folks, you know it's going on. It's been going on in those underground labs forever. I mean, you guys know this. I've talked to people who've been down in there. You know it's going on. You know it's going on. And who knows what type of cloning. Think about this. Genetically modified magnificent human specimens. Genetically tailored to be strong and tall and athletic and to manipulate those genes. Let's just say that. Let's just say more superhuman and then to clone them. You know this is that this technology exists. Let's get real. Let's understand it. Now it appears we already have. Is Billy Nitrain here? I mean, can you imagine if there was a hundred Billy Nitrains? How much we could get done. What? Oh, he is there. Something's going on with the signs, he said. Okay. Can you imagine, though, if they created 100 Billy Night Trains? Cloning them. It'd be, uh, it'd be, it'd be in, in, very interesting. That's what I'm saying. That's the type of technology we're talking about here. It would be worse if there was 100 Paul Begley's. What? The internet would just break the internet. What? It would just absolutely break the internet. It'd be over. <laughs> it would be so, they would be like saying, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh man. I, I'm just joking around. But in all seriousness, guys, I mean, this is getting, we're, we're messing with things we shouldn't. Robomom can't be cloned. That's right. No, that, no, no, can't happen. Anyway, I mean, it, it just, I'm joking around, but it's really not a funny thing, and I should get more serious, but it's hard. It, it, it just, uh, the signs are everywhere. The signs are everywhere. Uh, genetically modified mosquitoes, genetically modified, you know, you had Dolly the sheep. Remember the cloning there? Okay, so you know the cloning thing's working. Then you throw in there, all the other stuff. Um, you'd have to, you know, you, 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 they, would, they would be trying to genetically modify, manipulating the human beings to mass produce their... I, now you're going into the, into the Third Reich era, okay? Now you're, now you're going down Joseph Mengele path with Adolf Hitler, okay? You're going down that path with Joseph Mengele. You're going down that path where he made all those 800... Thousand sets of twins, and you know they were doing ge ge genetic manipulation way long time ago. So you know how far this thing has advanced, and we're just now here in China has just created the first genetically modified baby. I'd just be crazy. Well, here's what they're saying: according to the Chinese medical documents posted online this month, team of Southern University of Science Technology has been recruiting couples in an effort to create the first gene edited babies they plan to eliminate a gene called ccr5 in hopes of rendering the offspring of resistant to hiv resistant to smallpox and to cholera so they're saying what it is you know this is a good thing it's always a good thing 
till you find out what the rest of the story is, what the real objective is. Remember Adolf Hitler and his genetically modifying, his uh, backbreeding attempts to create the f perfect human race. Okay? And the meanwhile, his Jewish solution to eliminate Jews off the face of the earth, a, a diabolical plan to erase the DNA of the children of God off the planet and to form a new Aryan, Aryan race superior to everyone else. That was the guy, that's the honest truth. That's what he was wanting to do to create, as he said, a kingdom that would last a thousand years. A thousand years. So what are the Chinese trying to do? This clinical trial document describes a study in which the CRISPR employed to modify human embryos before they are transferred into the woman's uterus. The scientist behind the effort, John Kuai, did not reply to a list of questions about whether the undertaking had produced a live birth. He won't say, you know they've already done this. They've reached, they tried to reach him by telephone. He's declining to answer the phone. Pick up the phone! Phone home! Now, however, the data submitted as part of the trial listing shows that the genetic tests have been carried out in the fetuses as of late, as 24 weeks, in other words, or six months. It's not known if those pregnancies were terminated, carried to term. Or, what do you think? You, you, you do this, you get the baby, six months in the womb, it's grown for six months. You're just going to terminate this child? You really think these scientists are just terminating this child now? No, they're going to follow through. They're going to see if they can do it. They're going to see how many times they can do it. They're going to see just how many, how many different ways they can manipulate the genes to make people taller, to make people stronger, to make people, uh, to get rid of the genes that might be susceptible to certain diseases. How can they make people's intelligence? You know, they're going to work on all of these things, guys. You know they're doing it. They're telling you this is, this is the soft disclosure. They're killing us softly with their work, ruining our whole life. That's right. I mean, they're doing it, okay? Let's, let's not joke around. Let's, 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 re let's, be, let's be real. They're doing it, okay? They're doing it. And they've been doing it. And they're going to keep doing it. And it's not just the Chinese. I'm not going to sit here and just point fingers at the Chinese. Come on. The United States is involved. We've got underground laboratories all over the earth. It's not just in America. It's all over the world. Oh, by the way, uh, they're trying to indict uh, Bibi. That's right. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. They're trying to indict him. Uh, the information we're getting now is, according to the reports, the prosecutors are bearing down on him and they are trying to indict Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, now we've known this for some time, that they were trying to get rid of him and they really are right now in the full court press. It's kind, of, it's kind of like this. They're trying real hard to get rid of Netanyahu in Israel. They're trying real hard to get rid of Theresa May in the UK, and they're trying real hard to impeach President Donald Trump in the United States. They'll, that, that's, that's just not a, uh, I'm not speculating, I'm just telling you, that's what's been going on, as we all know. Uh, anyway, they want to indict Netanyahu, a prosecutor recommends that he be indicted in two cases of bribery. Uh, according to the reports, he took a bottle of wine, somebody gave him a bottle of wine, um, and so that was receiving a bribe. And uh, let's see, the state prosecution team working on case 1000, the illegal gifts affair, and also case 2000 against Benjamin Netanyahu reportedly received a bottle of wine from a, um, what would be considered a lobbyist here. Okay. In, in lieu of trying to persuade the Prime Minister on his position on a certain zoning. I mean, look, this is really petty. Um, 
it's going to take more than a bottle of wine, I would think, to get Benjamin Netanyahu to recommend an entire um, okay you know, I, I just think that we, we're really watching again this is the petty stuff that goes on in um, politics look to, to, to say well yeah but now he might have done it yeah no doubt he, somebody offered him a gift like that that's so minute, minute that doesn't make it some kind of bribery charge and all that Somebody offers a, a gift like that, you know, and they're not allowed to take any gifts. But somebody, and, and maybe he didn't even take it. I mean, here's another thing. Do we even know the story? So I don't know. I just see, what I do is I take five steps back and I see a global attempt to remove some of the world leaders, okay? Especially those that are all kind of working together. And um, now I don't know about Theresa May, exactly her whole story, but... She obviously is not getting the Brexit done, so the people really want something done here. But she's trying to now, and so let's see how that plays out. We're not sure how that's going to work out right now. But um, anyway, and we, and we already know this, so they're trying to prosecute Benjamin Netanyahu. They're trying to impeach President Trump. Uh, oh, Moscow, of course, warned the United States about those deploying of missiles but really the real situation we have here guys um the real situation we got here also is in the uk is uh, ukraine and russia this is very very dangerous what's taking place here a uh, very very dangerous situation um and when you have anytime you have a country now declaring martial law now here's what the ukrainians are saying demanding that Russia return their three ships that were seized and their sailors that are... So Ukraine's parliament is considering President Poroshenko's call to impose martial law in that country in the wake of Russia seizing three of its ships and their crews. The president reduced an earlier version of a bill to propose 30 days of a martial law and an apparent concession... Uh, which would allow for elections to be called as scheduled in December. Now, Parliament is expected to vote on this matter today. Russia fired on two Ukrainian naval ships, rammed a third vessel yesterday in the Black Sea, seizing the ships and accusing them of illegally entering its territorial waters. Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine, said today that he wants to declare martial law to strengthen Ukraine's defense capabilities and increasing aggression, and according to international law, a cold act of aggression by the Russian Federation. He added that Ukraine intends to keep adhering to all international obligations. Now, Poroshenko is demanding that Russia immediately release those Ukrainian sailors and their three ships. But Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Larvov accused Ukraine of violating international norms with dangerous methods that created threats and risk for the normal movement of ships in the area. Russia continued to ignore Western calls to release those sailors today. And the United Nations Security Council is holding an emergency meeting to address this situation in an effort to keep it from escalating. Uh, European Union Chief Donald Tusk commended Russia's use of force, excuse me, condemned it, I said commended, condemned it, that's a big difference, uh, Russia's use of force and reiterated that the European Union would stand in support of Ukraine. Now, Russian authorities must return the Ukrainian sailors, the vessels, and refrain from further provocations, he tweeted today adding he had spoken with Poroshenko. Of course, that is the president of the EU, Donald Tusk. He said, quote, and I'm reading his Twitter tweet, I condemn Russians' use of force in the Sea of Azov. Russian authorities must return the Ukrainian sailors, the vessels, and refrain from further provocations. I discussed this situation with President Poroshenko and will meet his representatives later today. Europe will stay united in support 
of Ukraine. Now remember something, guys. Russia does not want Ukraine to become part of the European Union. So Ukraine is not part of the EU, but they're getting, they're getting the support of the EU, while Russia is still in conflict with Ukraine after seizing, uh, annexing Crimea and s- really sending all their little green men in there to help fight and raise up the Russian rebels in eastern Ukraine. Now, Ukrainian officials say at least six sailors were wounded and denies going doing anything wrong, accusing Russia of military aggression. Such actions pose a threat to the security of all states in the Black Sea region and therefore require a clear response from the international community, Ukraine's foreign ministry said. The Russian Federal Security Service accused Ukraine of staging a deliberate provocation. So, uh, the, of course, the Kerch Strait is the only passage between those two seas. So the Ukrainians need to be able to get their ships through there, you know, uh, goods and services and, 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 and all the different freight that has to f- funnel through there. And that's considered international waters. That's been the norm. But, for, but when the Ukrainians sent two naval gunships and a tugboat through there, the Russians said, hold it a minute, no military ships through here. And, the, and so they fired on the Ukrainians and seized their ships and injured some of their sailors. Now, Russia said that Ukrainian ships were violating the waters and accused the Ukrainians of failing to inform it that the three of their ships were planning to sail through the Kerch, a charge that Ukraine is denying. They're saying they did tell the Russians. Now, both NATO and the European Union issued statements late Sunday urging both sides to act with the utmost restraint. While NATO calls on Russia to ensure unhindered access to the Ukrainian ports from the Sea of Azov in accordance with international law. The Trump administration has previously warned Russia against trying to strangle the Ukrainian economy by harassing international shipping through the Kerch Strait. Russia forcibly annexed Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula in 2014, claiming its ethnic Russian majority, which is true, about 90% of the Ukrainians spoke Russian, and uh, claiming that its ethnic Russian majority was under threat from the Ukrainian government. Fighting between pro-Russian forces in eastern Ukraine and Ukrainian troops has eased in recent months, but there's still occasional deadly flare-ups. Russia has constantly and consistently denied sending weapons and fighters to help the Russian separatists or rebels, despite strong evidence to the contrary that the Russians are there. All right, so that's, will Russia go ahead and let these ships go? Uh, And will the Russians allow the Ukrainians to, free passage, safe passage to keep letting in the, in those international waters. And Trump is saying you better. So what, what's going to happen? Okay, so we're going to watch this closely because it is a significant development uh, on the world stage. Okay, there's no doubt about that. It is a major, major significant development. You, you're on the brink of World War III. If we're not careful, and you know what? Here's what I want to say. In the last three years, in the last four to five years, really, <clears throat> all of the new, m- most of the new Humvees, um, military armored vehicles, the uniforms, everything, most of it, not 100%, but most of it being produced is, is camouflaged in the green colors that uh, would be used if you fought a war in Europe not with the, the desert sand colors. A few of those are still being produced because we've still got troops in Afghanistan. We've still got, you know, we still got special forces that, that get deployed all over the Middle East. We're, we're using special forces and drones for the most part. We've got about 10,000 troops maybe or so in Afghanistan. It might be a little more than that. And we got people spread out in, you know, Jordan and Kuwait and Qatar and uh, in Iraq you know, we got special forces and special 
um, groups and troops and stuff. But 90% of everything being produced now is colored to fight a the, 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 the camouflage colors of the green that they're doing is for war in places like Europe. It would be perfect for European. So, and you keep hearing about uh, Emmanuel Macron keeps talking about an EU army. And you keep hearing the Russians advancing, uh, squeezing the Ukrainians. And we know that there has been planes shot down over the skies. Okay? And we know that there is, uh, there's constantly buzzing going on between Russian fighter jets and British ships and U.S. and Russia. And, 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 okay? and then China's inching always closer into the Pacific, which is causing a threat as it relates to, uh, you know, the, the, all those islands. So what I'm saying is, it's like, it's like there's this itching, this industrial military complex, this itching for war, this itching and itching for some kind of conflict. Um, uh, and, and this concerns me greatly, because why would there even be war? What, what is the rationale behind it? Why is Russia being aggressive toward Ukraine? Why is, uh, um, why is there tensions building in the EU? Why, who's orchestrating some of this stuff that's been going on? It's, it's, um, there seems to be a uh, uh, social engineering going on right now. Uh, there's, just, there's, there's something about it don't feel right. There's something about it. That absolutely don't feel right. I could get, I could go down a lot of rabbit trails and conspiracy theorist trails. I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go down them and say it's because of this or it's because of that or it's because of this group. No, I, I'm just saying that overall something just bothers me about um, wars are not fought on knee-jerk reactions. Things are planned way in advance. When you start seeing the uniform colors changing and the, the colors on the tanks changing and the colors on the armored vehicles changing and you don't even know why in the world they'd be changing if there's no military conflict really going on. So what does this all mean? Are we preparing for some kind of war breaking out in, 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 in Europe, spilling on into the Middle East? I mean, Israel is certainly very concerned about all the, the different factions that are surrounding them the ukrainians are very concerned about what's going on with themselves and even poland is nervous because they you know they've been invaded before they know what it means and as a matter of fact all of those uh, baltic states are nervous that especially after russia um uh, annexed crimea you know the baltic states uh, latvia lithuania Estonia, they all are worried. They're going to be jerked back in. Georgia, they're all worried. So what does this all mean? There's the spirit of war. It's the red horseman of the apocalypse. It's the, the, that takes the peace from the earth. It's not just, um, you know, it's the, the spirit of conflict. And, and I mean, I look at this from a spiritual standpoint. It's, it's literally like a spirit of conflict. And it's very disturbing to me. And I, and I see it and I sense it. And... Uh, and I'm going to keep praying about it because, uh, uh, I mean, there's question of could there be a ground invasion even over there? There's a report out right now, just came out today. Ukraine's president, uh, Poroshenko, claims that uh, Russia is preparing a ground invasion as he declares martial law hours after naval clashes spark war fears. He called an emergency summit of, of his war cabinet yesterday as tensions in the troubled region reach a boiling point. And Ukraine's president has reportedly claimed his intelligence services have learned Russia's preparing a very large-scale ground attack on his country. Poroshenko made the shocking allegations on a live television address to the nation in which he revealed he's now going to introduce martial law in order to ensure security of the country to, so he can figure out who's on what side, basically. And he said that he has serious grounds, intelligence, to believe that Russia is ready 
to follow up this weekend's outrageous naval clashes in the Black Sea with a full-scale ground attack. However, some critics say Poroshenko could be using the allegations as a vote winner ahead of his country's election. And in the invasion news, it's true. If it was true, it will send shudders down the spines who remember Russia's controversial annexation of Crimea in 2014. So back then, thousands of people died in the fighting between the Ukrainian troops and the separatist rebels. Many more found themselves homeless. Ukrainians' country is worried about the president called an emergency summit of the war cabinet after the military tensions in the troubled region reached the boiling point. And uh, the move came hours after Russia fired on Ukrainian ships, captured 23 sailors, injuring six of them, sparking fears of war with the UN and NATO, both frantically now, arranging emergency meetings. The British government also condemned Russia's act of aggression and adding it is further evidence uh, of Russia's destabilization influence in the region. Matter of fact, Ukraine's decree states martial law in Ukraine will effective from November 26th, that's today, until January 25th, 2019. It was later cut back to a month. So now they're saying November 26th till Christmas Day, December 25th. But in order, the order could see the imposition of direct military control over the nation's people of Ukraine. It could also mean control of TV stations, compulsory military service, a ban on um, demos and demonstrations, and even a suspension of the elections for the sake of national security. Uh, the news comes after Ukrainian Foreign Minister Klemkin warned it was likely Russia plans further acts of aggression at the seas or on the ground. The UN Security Council will hold an emergency meeting today to address the escalating fears that from the Black Sea skirmish could lead to further military clashes. Sunday's hostilities be began when Russia stopped three Ukrainian naval vessels passing beneath a bridge in the hotly contested Kerch Strait. Two artillery ships and a tugboat were subsequently fired upon, seized in the clashes, which left at least six Ukrainian sailors injured. Twenty-three sailors were taken in, uh, were taken captive. Russia said its patrol boats seized the vessels and crew after they entered its territorial waters illegally and carried out provocative actions. Their aim is clear: to create a conflict situation in the region. Russia's hardline secret service, FSB, said on Monday. However, Ukraine insists it has been given, it had given Russia plenty of advance warning of this, this route being taken by its ships. The incident in the waters off the Crimea Peninsula makes a major escalation of tensions between these two nations. And each country blames the other for a worrying incident in which the two gunboats and the tugboat were eventually captured by Putin's Navy. Will Vladimir Putin just release them and let them go home and say, all right, don't do it again. Make sure you tell us in advance. Or will Putin hold these three boats and 23 sailors hostage? Ukrainian Foreign Minister Klimlin says the captured seamen should be treated as prisoners of war. And Klimkin told reporters in Kiev, Ukraine, that the government is in talks with the Red Cross to make sure that the seamen were being treated as prisoners of war. Six Ukrainians were also of the 23 injured after the Russian border, border guards opened fire on those three Ukrainian military vessels, hitting two of the vessels and ramming one of them. So guys, it's getting, uh, it's getting very, 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 very dangerous. And uh, what does this all mean? And how does this get corrected or does it? And so this is a situation. We don't want World War III. I don't care what anybody says. It's not worth it. But it's all about the oil, guys. Let's be honest. It's all about the oil. It's about the pipelines of oil that flow out of Russia into Europe. The, the European Union wants to control their own destiny, be making sure they have 
control of that pipeline running through Ukraine. And um, it's about the Russians want to make sure they're in control of that pipeline that runs through eastern Ukraine. And uh, it's not just that pipeline we're talking about. But uh, Russia also wanted to secure Crimea as it's a very valuable port along the, uh, there along the Black Sea area. So they want to make sure they had that, and they got it now. And Russia does have a good point. About 90% of the people speak Russian, and, and that the uh, Ukrainian government was really struggling. And so that can, I mean, there's some points you can make for both sides here. So what's Putin going to do next? Okay, boot scootin' Putin. Uh, I don't know. And uh, while that's going on, and that's huge right now, don't forget Syria. Don't forget the fact that Putin brought his friends, the Iranians, in and are sitting right there staring over the border into Israel. Don't forget that Syria, Assad, has been uh, propped up real nice. Don't forget that that's going on in the Middle East and that Hezbollah's got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of rockets. They've been storing them up now for, since the 2006 war with Lebanon. And don't forget the Hamas and the hostilities and, and, the, and the anger that's building there. And at the same time, Jared Kirshner working on this uh, peace deal that he's apparently ready to bring to the table. Matter of fact, Nikki Haley has read it and said it is ready to go. And matter of fact, everyone's waiting on Trump to bring it forward, yet the president is holding it back because he wants to have the deal done before he even reveals the deal. I know what he's doing. He's trying to get uh, the um, uh, Palestinian Authority President Maoud Abbas to agree to the deal before he reveals the deal, to say, yes, we will do this, because apparently it's going to require both the Israelis and the Palestinians to make a serious sacrifice or compromise that neither side wants to do. But according to Trump, unless both sides give up something they don't want to, no deal could ever be done can't be a one-sided deal. It's got to be, there's got to be a way to meet in the middle, which would include the building of the third temple. You know it does. You know it does. You know it does. And so with this going on, you study Bible prophecy. We are living in the end times. We're living in the last days. And uh, this is why the tensions are building. The three religions of the apocalypse are converging in Jerusalem upon the Temple Mount. And the wars, the rumors of wars. And don't forget Kim Jong-un. And there's news surfacing that he's still capable of an EMP attack on the United States. Still got that star satellite thing flying by. And that's why we're opening up what's called the Space Force. Because warfare is moving into outer space, guys. Whoever controls the space will control the ground. It's went from the ground to the sea to the air to space. And this is, uh, this is exactly how warfare is being fought all over the world. This is the new era we're in, the new technological advancement. Um, it's just crazy, okay? It's just crazy. Uh, so it's going to be crazy what goes on next. So there's a lot going on, a lot going on, and a lot to pray about. Uh, so just keep, uh, keep your eyes open. And, uh, and uh, we're going to watch and see what happens on these areas. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I sometimes study these things and I say, wow, who's going to do what next? Uh, who's going to do what next? There's a Christmas tree shortage in Florida, just in case you wanted to know. But uh, back on the border, we know that's, that's a tension that we really need to get that resolved. We don't need that going on. Uh, Jerome Corsi. Uh, reports are he's refusing to take a plea deal with Robert Mueller. Uh, that's according to CNN. Roger Stone says he won't agree to a plea deal. Um, what does this all mean? And this has to do with WikiLeaks. And oh, by the way, WikiLeaks' attorneys are now being stopped and are not allowed to go into the Ecuadorian embassy to meet with Julian Assange and the Ecuadorian ambassador who was negotiating the Julian Assange situation with the British and the United States, he has been pulled out of the Ecuadorian embassy and sent back home. 
And then Julian Assange, yesterday, his, his attorney showed up at the Ecuadorian embassy and they were stopped at the door and were, and, and were not given access. So there's something about ready to happen with Julian Assange that's tied to Roger Stone and Jerome Corsi in this Mueller investigation. Now we do know there are sealed indictments, including sealed indictments on Julian Assange and his WikiLeaks organization. What does this all mean? Uh, well, according to CNN, an associate of Roger Stone said today he's refusing to sign a plea deal offered by the special counsel, um, Robert Mueller. Jerome Corsi, whose role in Mueller's investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election, largely revolves around the possibility that he was intermediately between Roger Stone and WikiLeaks. And he said he was offered a deal to plead on one count of perjury. They can put me in prison the rest of my life, he said. I'm not going to sign a lie, Corsi told CNN on the phone. Asked what happens now that he's refusing, Corsi responded, I don't know, but I'm not signing a plea deal of perjury when I didn't do it. A spokesman for the special counsel's office had no comment. Corsi acknowledged he was in a plea negotiations with Mueller's office, and earlier this month he said he expected to be indicted for giving false information to special counsel or to one of the other grand jury. But Corsi said today that he believed that he would be lying by signing a plea agreement because he says he did not willfully mislead anyone. Describing his experience with Mueller's team as like being interrogated as a POW in the Korean War, Corsi said after two months of questioning, prosecutors believe they caught him in various lies and did not appear to believe him when he said he could not recall certain events. Corsi insisted he had no contact with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and that investigators were so mad because I didn't give them what they wanted. Um, he claimed that Mueller's team wanted to keep any plea agreement sealed, a point that particularly incensed him. Corsi said he would be required to report legal infractions to financial regulators. And in a statement on Monday following Corsi's latest comments, Roger Stone said the special counsel was harassing Corsi not for lying, but for refusing to lie and continue to maintain his own innocence. It is inconceivable that in America someone would be prosecuted for refusing to swear to a false narrative pushed on him by the Mueller investigation. That's the statement by Roger Stone. Stone also said last week that as far as he knew, Corsi refused to lie and expressed sympathy for his associate apparent legal problems while also appearing to question his credibility. He doesn't believe the moon landing happened, for example. He thinks it was staged. Corsi comments have added to the public focus around Stone, a longtime associate of President Donald Trump, and being investigated by the Mueller investigation. All right, so that's kind of where we're at. Stone and Corsi both pushing back um, on the Mueller investigation. We'll wait and see. There's, there is a lot of sealed indictments out there. We know that Julian Assange is one of those. We don't know what this all means. But uh, it's, it's, it's getting crazy. Someone just said, Pastor, scientists believe there is a brown dwarf approaching and is inside Jupiter's orbit. Well, that, is that today? Did they just announced that? Let me just uh, Google that real fast. Thank you for putting that in the chat room there. We'll, uh, we'll check it out. Give me one second. Let's see what we have here. Um, sorry, I don't see. Well, I guess it was like four days ago. Sorry, I don't. I'm. I'm not spotting that, so someone would have to um somebody would have to put that in the chat room there for me. Um 
a link. If you have a link, they have to go in there. So I'm not sure about that. Okay, I'll do a little research. How about this? I'll do a little research. Okay, um, now, what I'm saying when it comes to the, uh, the, the whole Russian story, uh, you're right. Someone just put, put in there, Pastor, okay. Yeah, Pastor presents an objective viewpoint. And, and Well, yes, I do. I do. I'm not going to. Look, I understand that the Russian government has to protect itself and its people and its interests. And some of that will be in direct conflict with the European Union and in direct conflict with the United States. I mean, I know that. And I'm not saying that the, because, you know, it'd be wrong to say, okay, because they want to protect their interests and we want to protect our interests, our interests is right, theirs is wrong. That, that would not be objective. You're exactly right. Uh, the United States has an interest. European Union has an interest. The Russians have an interest. The Chinese have an interest. And, of course, everybody else around the world, everybody has an interest. But when it comes to some of these things, what you're seeing is <clears throat> people want to make sure long-term they're in control of the energy sources. And so, unfortunately, some of the things that any of those groups will do will not be, will not be ethically correct. But you'll see them do it anyway because they're trying to gain an advantage on how they can have a long-term security of their country and the resources that are going to be available on the planet. So people are playing the long game right now. All of us are. Uh, ever, and I'm saying the United States is, the Russians are, the Chinese are, the European nations are, and other nations as well. They're, everybody's trying to make sure that they protect their own interests long term. And sometimes that becomes a conflict with other nations. And uh, then there's always other issues, okay, which would be certainly ideology, okay? And then in, in the Middle East, it's, it's religion. To be quite honest with you, it's religion. Religion is unbelievably passionate. And uh, the folks, uh, to the point, we've seen it how many times for centuries we've witnessed fighting and, and, and wars over religious ideology, and then uh, for a period of time, World War I, World War II, we seen it over just ideology. It wasn't really religious. It was ideology. It was a battle of, uh, you know, free, uh, what we would call democracies and communisms and socialisms and different isms. And so, and then dictators rise, and dictators will always rise. They have throughout history. This is all part of what goes on in, in this planet we call Earth. And so I continue to keep a, uh, a more clear-headed objective. I will remain that way uh, as a pastor and as uh, someone who's re look uh, trying our best to understand that in this big world, time's running out and that God's children are everywhere and we got to figure out a way to, to uh, live together. But at the same time, the Bible prophecies say we won't. We won't figure it out. We won't live together. We will continue to be at conflict. We will continue to be at war and rumors of war. We will do things that are not correct. And, this will con and we will continue to not retain God in our knowledge. And ultimately, things will get worse and worse. And this is the beginning of sorrows. And so the signs of the apocalypse are everywhere. They are everywhere. And not everybody's ready to go. Not everybody's ready to meet the Lord. Not everybody is even believing in God. And Satan's working triple time to convince people there is no God. He is a liar. He is the angel of light. He's the deceiver. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. He was referring to Lucifer and his, uh, his uh, uh, demonic forces. Jesus said, but I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And so I can say to you today that the greatest thing, the greatest, the greatest, greatest thing you could ever do in your life is to give your life to Christ and be a follower of Jesus and Jesus' principles. Read the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It will change your life. Even if you're saved, even if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, even if you're born again, it is so important to continue to go back to the words of Christ, the greatest sermon ever preached, and read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and constantly apply these principles of the gospel to your life. 
and walk in the spirit of the Lord and the love of the Lord and you'll see all humanity in a different light. You will not have racism. You will not have territorialism. You will not have religious schism. But you will walk in the love and the joy of Christ and you will treat your fellow man the way you want to be treated. You will do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You will walk a mile. No, you'll walk two. You'll give your coat and your cloak. You'll reach out to those that are asking you and you'll forgive those that are trespassing you. Are you ready to be saved? I want to play a song and if you would like to be born again, today's the day to do that. This is the time to do that. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is definitely made unto salvation. You can't earn salvation. You cannot buy salvation. It's a free gift. Jesus paid the price already. If you believe he's the son of God, you're halfway there. If you're willing to let go of the world and grab a hold of the cross, if you're willing to turn away from sin and ask Christ to come into your life, to save you, to set you free, you know, let's do this today. Let's do this right now. Let's call upon the name of Jesus. I'll play a song right now. As this plays, if you want to be saved, I'll write your name down and, and uh, I would really love to pl- pray with you for salvation. I really would love to pray with you for salvation today. In the darkness where everything is unknown I face the power of sin on my own I did not know Just type Just type I want to be saved Just type I want to be saved Ivan Gooden wants to be saved up in Montreal. Ivan Gooden, praise God. Lena Grinnell wants to be saved. Lena Grinnell wants to be saved. Diwanur Krapu. I'm saying your name wrong. Diwanur Krapu wants to be saved. There's others out there that want to be saved, folks. There's other people wanting to be saved over at New Live Stream. Over at uh, PaulBigleyProphecy.com. Some of you at our YouTube channel, at uh, Paul Begley Prophecy YouTube channel, backup channel. There's people watching right now on the archives at Roku Satellite Television. This is your moment, folks. This is the moment. This is your moment. Give your life to Jesus Christ.
you can do this. You can do this today. Just type, I want to be saved. 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 You can do this right now. Call upon the name of the Lord. Raymond Grinnell also wants to be saved. Lene's husband, Raymond, praise God. Praise God. There's others out there, folks. There's others. Time is running out. The signs are everywhere. Give your life to Jesus Christ. You know what? We're so excited right now and so thankful for these that are wanting to be saved. We have uh, Lena Grinnell wants to be saved. Her husband, Raymond Grinnell, also wants to be saved. Uh, also in Montreal, Canada, Ivan Goodland wants to be saved. And also Dewander Crapure. Uh, and I'm not saying your name correctly. It looks like a French name. Also wants to be saved. I want to pray. And I know there's others. That's just the four we know of. And I'm sure there's others, plus thousands of people are going to watch this broadcast live on the, uh, all across all the different social networks. So if you're watching, and this is an archive, and you want to be saved, you pray with us right now, and you accept Christ as your Savior, and uh, call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm calling upon the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking Jesus to set me free, to come into my heart, to come into my soul, to come into my mind, and to break, break every chain, to break the chains and to set us free, Lord. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. I repent of my sins. I confess my sins to God. And I open my heart's door to Jesus Christ and I confess him as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus raised from the dead and he rose victoriously. I believe he ascended into heaven and I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus Saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. God bless you. I'm so excited for every one of you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. 
uh, that you've chosen to give your life to Christ. This is what it's all about, folks. This is what it's all about. The signs of the times are everywhere. All right, and and uh, so it's time to get in, become a part of the body of Christ, and become this great, amazing online church of believers. Uh, wow! Uh, welcome to the family. All right, welcome to the family of God. Amen. And uh, you know, you can just—I just want to say I love you. If you need a—if you need a, look, I'm going to encourage you to get baptized. First of all, you need to find a pastor, find a church, a Messianic congregation somewhere. Tell them you got saved. And you want to be baptized, all right? Uh, really, seriously. This is the salvation station. And uh, we're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world, everywhere we can, everywhere we go. And we want people to find the joy of salvation. If you need a Bible, you can send an email at MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. Once again, that's MissZD01 at hotmail.com, and uh, we'll send you a Bible, it's free, and we'll pay the postage and get it to you no matter where you are in the world. There's some people that are sick that may need a, a point of contact of faith. We've got prayer cloths that have healing scriptures on them. We anoint it with oil and pray over them, and we will send them to you for free and pay the postage. You just simply send an email to zd one at hotmail.com, or click on the links that Melissa just put in the chat rooms. Click on the link and request it and give us your address, of course. We will get it to you. Now, there are people that are very, very ill out there that we need to get a blanket to, okay, that are very ill. And we send these blankets free. People donate blankets. Wonderful group of folks that do that. Some of them are handmade, and some of them are, you know, are literally... And uh, we anoint them with oil, we pray over them, and we send them to the people that are very, very ill. And miracles do happen, and, and people's lives are changing. It's the love we have in our heart for the people who truly need to be blessed. Now, I'm going to ask for financial help today simply because we, the needs are out there and the needs are increasing. People that need blankets and chemo caps and all of that but also we've been uh, really uh, got a lot to cover when it comes to these needs during this time of year. And uh, it's been incredible, really, how that God has been so good. At the same time, Satan has attacked us, of course, because we're not able to go live on our main YouTube channel every day. And because of that, uh, that's about half of the uh, views that we normally get we're not able to reach. We know people don't know we're here. Uh, but we have a tremendous following of fans and supporters and members of this online church and subscribers. People call themselves everything. I got friends and, I mean, it depends what social media they call them. And those folks, many of those have remained consistent and have fought through it with us. And we're uh, almost through this now. I think we're about 30 days away or something. Uh, but we still need your help. So if you would go there, RoboMom's telling you to they're putting the link up there. If you want to make a donation today, please do that. Know that. Know that. That uh, you know, there's, a, there's the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Well, that's kind of what the devil's tried to do with us. And because that's affected the numbers of people that could be saved, tremendously affecting the numbers of salvation. Because one of the things God told us to do was stand out there in the middle of that highway. You know, not just to hang out with the church crowd, but to literally get out there where everybody is and say, look, Jesus is coming. And many people have been saved because of that. Satan knows that. He hates that. There's two things he hates. Altar calls and offerings. And he fights both of them. So I want to first thank all of our faithful partners who have been so faithful through this uh, last 60 days and uh, that uh, we're just about through it. But we need your help. And I'm not joking about that. Uh, help us so that we can get across the finish line here and then we'll continue to roar on uh, into 2019. We're going to make sure that the kingdom of God increases in the in the coming months. So thank you, RoboMom, and thank you, Melissa, the text giving. She's putting it, if you want to text give, do that right now. 765-327-4200. Again, that number is 765-327-4200. Text the word give to that number and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. And uh, if you'd like to write us, 
They'll put my address up there in the chat rooms as well. You can write us and send a, your tithe and offering, or maybe you want to make a special donation. And uh, I know we're coming into that tax time where some people literally need to give a donation because of simply they've been so blessed they've, their taxes that they need to give. They need to give. All right. Um, and so if you're going to do that, that's the Lord's laid on your heart. Of course, you uh, please do that. You can give and uh, simply just send it, and we will respond back to you. Request, of course, a uh, support on that. We will send you back your uh, documentation uh, for your tax purposes. So some people want to do that as well, so I'm letting you know that. It's just so good that people are being faithful. You know, the Bible says, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you a ruler over many. And so many of you, and I want to thank all of these uh, tremendous online uh, members of this online church and all of you who come to these daily programs. Thank you so much for being faithful and being a partner with Publicly Prophecy Ministries. Don't forget also, we're going to be, it's time to start getting signed up for the next semester of the, the Public School of Prophecy. And matter of fact, uh, I'm going to be bringing on about seven students on a show live where they're going to share with you their testimony of how much the School of Prophecy has changed their lives. All right, so praise God. So there you see it. Uh, God bless all of you. If you have prayer requests, get a hold of Prayer Warriors. If you want to be a part of the Prayer Warrior team, get a hold of them. As uh, Melissa's putting the uh, links in the chat room there. Good to see you. There's somebody saying blessings from Norway. Well, bless you. God bless you. I want to thank all the moderators doing a great job as always, keeping everybody informed with everything that's going on. It's really been wonderful. Now, I'm going to be uh, traveling tomorrow all day long, so we'll not be doing any live broadcasting tomorrow because we're traveling back home. Uh, and I'll be back in the Salvation Station studio on Wednesday morning. Tonight, it's a little iffy. Uh, I may be live and I may not. Um, I just don't know right now because I'm trying to figure out it's our last evening here and I just don't know what our plans are this evening uh, and because we're on the West Coast compared to East Coast. So uh, I'm going to leave that just kind of up in the air. Boy, that's terrible, isn't it? So just check and see, all right? Uh, and we'll let you know what we're going to do, all right? I may post a video a little bit later. Once I find out clearly what the direction is tonight. Tomorrow is a travel day. Wednesday, back in the studio, okay? All right. Well, God bless all of you. We love you guys. And uh, we will be back for sure Wednesday morning live, all right? Pray one for another. God bless all of you. Are you serious? This is Cyber Monday. What? It's getting crazy. God bless you guys. God bless. <laughs>